A couple of DLCs ago, the hangar business got itself a permanent triple buff to its payout, but the problem still was that it was still not that fun to play or really worth your time based on the missions that you had to do. Especially those sale missions where you had to sell one crate in three different vehicles became a bit ridiculous. Luckily though, with the release of the San Andreas Mercenaries DLC, Rockstar introduced a bunch of new sale and source missions to the hangar business. And trust me when I say this, it became a whole lot better. All of these missions can effectively all be completed in about 5 minutes or less, if you're using aircraft, which is really ironic if you think about it. So in this guide, I think it's a good idea to revisit the hangar business and go over all of these new missions that you should be playing instead of the old missions which are in the air. To explain what's going on exactly, when sourcing or selling a mission, you'll be prompted with a few options, that being either the air missions or the land missions. Now from now on, air missions are no longer cool. Land missions are the things you should be doing. There's a total of four different land missions, each with their own variation of locations. The first one requires you to go to Sandy Shores Airfield, and then from there you'll have to go to a different location in the search area where you'll be able to find the crate. If you're using an air vehicle, you don't have to really shoot anything, just wait until you see the crate blink or have a giant green arrow above it. You simply pick it up while you're still in your helicopter or inside of your jet, and then just fly away again. The second one requires you to go to a closed garage door and then shoot a generator. Now, you can also use your RC Bandito to go underneath the garage door and then disable the cameras, but honestly, it doesn't really make any sense to try to stealth this, solely based on the fact that the amount of enemies that you get are very easily avoidable, and by the time that they arrive, you're already up in the air, back to your hangar. The third mission requires you to go to a deal location, which you can again just ignore all the enemies, and then just shoot one of these crates here as well to destroy it, which will allow you to grab your cargo, instead of having to use the trailer truck all the way back to the hangar. And the final source mission requires you to go to a platform, then use a submarine to grab the cargo, then drive it all the way to the land, and then get it into a truck, and then drive that truck back to your hangar. Now luckily, you are able to destroy that truck after you deliver the cargo to it, allowing you to then pick it up and then make your way back to your hangar, just like you can in the air source missions. However, the submarine source mission is arguably the longest and possibly the worst one. The locations for them are in the Alamo Sea, Polito Bay, and El Burro Heights. So if the game tells you to go to either of those three locations, I would honestly just go and find a new session. Especially if you're on the newer platforms, finding that new session is going to be very quick and way better than having to do that mission. But if you're someone who doesn't really care, the mission itself doesn't really take all that long. It takes maybe a little bit longer than five minutes, so I'll leave it up to you. But, but definitely worth skipping if you don't feel like doing the longest winded mission. Sail missions are also massively approved and have three different variations, all of which that are very doable. There's a sail mission that requires you to do five drops in a Rattel off-road car, ten city drops inside of an Apocalypse Issy or a Vagrant, and finally one stop with a trailer. And yes, you're also able to use your Phantom Wedge. Also, bonus tip for the Rattel and the Issy or Vagrant missions, you can use your cargo bob to lift it outside of your respective hangar area and then bring it closer to the location to save yourself perhaps a little bit of time. Though I would argue that it's probably quicker to just drive the vehicle instead, and especially if you're playing in a public lobby, it probably is a little bit safer. But I figured I'd include it in case people want to do it this way. All right, let's talk strategy. There's two different ways of how you can go about this. You can decide to go for short term and quick profit, or you can take it a little bit longer and make a bit more money. We're talking a couple hundred thousand here, or maybe somewhere up to a million if you were to sell in the full lobby. For the short term strategy, what you want to be doing is get two sets of 25 crates. The best options to choose from here is either narcotics, chemicals or medical. So if you want to go for the short term gain, for example, you should be going for 25 crates of narcotics and 25 crates of chemicals. The reason why you want to swap in between the two is primarily because of the sourcing cooldown. There's a three minute cooldown between each source mission. And by doing it this way, you'll be able to keep doing source missions and fill up your hangar the fastest way. This will result into you being able to earn $975,000 for each of these 25 
25 crates because after 25 crates you get an additional 35 percent bonus for having gathered the same type of crate obviously this will be able to go times two resulting into just shy of two million dollars for both of these 50 crates however if you were to be selling this in a full lobby of about 25 players or more, you'll be able to make a total of $1.4 million for selling in that full lobby per 25 crates. Meaning that if you were to sell both sets, you'll be able to walk away with $2.9 million. But if you're someone who wants to go for the full 50 crates, you will have to deal with the three minute cooldown in between your source mission. Now, obviously in those three minutes, you could go do a payphone mission, or you could do, for example, some CEO work or take care of any of your other businesses, or perhaps you could say hello to your mom again for some time. You know, you haven't called her in a little while. You should maybe do that. If you were to gather a total of 50 crates of one type of product, you'll be able to make $2,550,000. But if you were to be selling in a full lobby, you'll be able to walk away with $3.8 million, which is $900,000 more than if you were to sell it in two sets of 25. Now, which one of the methods is the best one is going to depend on what you want. Do you want to make the quickest money the fastest way possible with your hanger? Then go for the short term version. If you're someone who just wants to source a crate here and there or not really burn themselves out on the hanger, then it's obviously a much better idea to try to go for 50 crates of one type of mission. So overall, the introduction of the land missions are a fantastic way of making this hanger business a lot more viable. You now are able to fill up an entire hangar in about four to five hours in total as a solo player which is a massive improvement over what it was before and the best part is if you have some friends who want to help you out you can have up to four crates in one source mission at the time making this even faster and that's all there is to it that is the new way of doing the hangar business in gta online if you enjoyed it or found it useful make sure to leave a like subscribe for more and if you really like what you see on the channel become a member like chloe gta plus left lane looney only fans made me do it notorious jam and the Vinewood car club thank you for watching and i'll see you all later